All right, I have got some lentils cooking for a pot pie that we're going to make. But first, we've got to make some crust. <laughs> I can always pick some up from the store, but I like making it myself because then I know exactly what goes into it. Although I guess technically I didn't grind the flour myself, so I got that from the store. But you can only take it so far. So let's see, I'm going to do watch, two cups of flour. I need about two thirds of a cup, a third, a third of a cup per of shortening per cup. Of flour we use. So we use two cups of flour. We want about two thirds cups of shortening. I have got about a third here. So I may need to use some coconut oil as well. And Crisco has these handy dandy baking sticks that are easy to measure. So I'm just going to fill up the empty gap to where it would be two thirds of a cup. And that'll make it easier for me to measure. Okay. Mm. I need a bigger bowl. You'll get your home back. All right, pour that in that bigger bowl. And then we need to, oh, let's put a little bit of salt in there. I put oregano in everything. Oh, and that's boiling, so that needs to be turned down to a simmer now. I get put it in the dishwasher. Ba -ba boom. All right, now we're going to use this fork to cut up the shortening and the coconut oil into the flour here. So we're going to keep doing this until these, all of our little pieces, none of them are bigger than like the size of a pea. All right, so we have got our dough pretty much cut up here. Let's see if I can get a little closer, show that. There's a few pieces that are definitely bigger than a pea, but I don't want to overwork the dough and then make it really call that good because most of them are smaller than pea size and then we're gonna get our we're gonna get our water cooling down because we want it to be like super super cold when we add it to our dough okay so while that's cooling down a little bit here I'm going to get my potatoes going So I'm going to be using muffin, a muffin to make my pot pies because I feel like they're easier to eat in smaller portions. So I want to make sure I get these potatoes diced up really fine. Rosa potatoes would be really good in this too. I'm going to use yellow potatoes. And I do like to cook them separately so that I can make sure that they get cooked all the way and I'm not depending on how cooked my pie crust is to determine if the potatoes inside are cooked. Like you'll probably be fine if you just want to cook them all together, but I just want to be, I'd just rather be safe than sorry. So I'm going to grab a little pan here. oil in there, just a little bit. Little oil. Get that heated up and let's grab some garlic. I don't 
want the skins to get all over my cutting board because I still have my potatoes over there. So I'm just going to go ahead and skin them over here off of my cutting board and then move them onto my surface here so that I can chop them. Ooh, that one smashed real nice. This one needs to be smashed a little more. Marjoram with these. Although I'm pretty sure I wore off the labels to my marjoram and like three other herbs. So we might just be doing some guesswork. I'm gonna put them over here. Okay. Definitely these ones. Okay, so it's definitely one of these ones. I'm gonna feel like a frilly. I don't think that's it. That's got a very distinct smell and I feel like I would know what it was if I saw the word, but it's definitely not marjoram. That might be it. That's not it. All right, put some marjoram in there. That's almost cold enough. This oil is melted. Let's just coat the pan evenly. And then we can toss our potatoes in there. while we get our crust done. Okay, so we're gonna start with, we're gonna start one tablespoon at a time, really. I'm going to, in the back of my head, be counting up to six-ish, and we'll see if we need a little bit more water to hold it together. Sticky, that's good. Careful not to overwork our dough. Four. Still want it evenly dispersed. Five. Really sticky in that one spot. Let me make sure that it just gets dispersed evenly. All right, now let's see if it's holding together. Kind of. Will that hold? No, that's not holding. We need a little more. Seven and eight. Okay. Make sure it gets mixed evenly. So now I need to clean and flour my counter. So I'm gonna clean up a little bit and I'll be right back. Okay. Got my rolling pin here. It says dashing through the dough on it. So that means that when we are rolling our dough, we need to get a little bit more festive. <clears throat> Dashing through the dough, rolling pin in hand, 
Roll it here, roll it there, roll it for the pan. Ho, oh, dashing through the dough. Rolling pan in hand. Roll it here, roll it there, roll it for the pan. And then roll it underneath yourself so that you get it all tangled up. <sighs> oh golly. Okay, this one's going to be a little bit more dense. That's okay. Dashing through the dough, rolling pan in hand. Spread the flour so it doesn't stick to the pan. Dashing through the dough, rolling pan in hand. Roll it here, roll it there, throw it in the pan. Oh! Barely bigger than that. So we're going to use this as a cutting utensil. Should work for one of these. Yeah. Delicious. Lentils are done too. Potatoes. Fantastic as well. Okay, so let's turn off the All right, so we've got our tomatoes in with our potatoes. And then we're going to chop up our onions nice and fine. my lentils to my pot pie mix over here. And last half of a cup. Perfect. Mix this up. Probably could have been a little bit more strategic about my utensil planning here. And then we will salt and season our filling to taste. Mm, actually, that's really... It's got a lot of flavor to it right now. I don't want to over salt it. but I did not cook these lentils with salt because I knew I was gonna be combining them with so many things. So I do wanna salt them a little bit to heighten the flavor. And mix that in. Oh yeah, that's perfect. So now we will go ahead and fill up our little pot pies. All right, perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and roll out some top crust for these and then we're gonna throw them in the oven. Throw it in the pan, oh! <laughs> make pot pies, make pot pies. Roll the edges up. Squish them together and roll them into the center. Okay. This one. Pinch the edges together. Hi, sweetheart. I see you. You are the best puppy in the whole wide world. And then I like to roll them in towards the middle for good measure. All right, so our pot pies are all sealed up and ready to hit the oven. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the oven heated to 350 and pop these suckers in. Mmm, 
smells like they might be done. Oh god, that smells so good. Oh my god. My knees literally got a little weak there. Oh my gosh. Oh, they smell so good. I'm telling you, putting herbs in the dough makes all the difference. I do that for my pies too. Like my sweet pies. Oh my gosh. Oh, they look so good. I'm sure they're way too hot to eat right now. Oh my goodness. Oh, look how beautiful that is. Oh, they're really hot. I definitely can't eat that right this second. I'll have to try it when it's cooled down. Oh my God, they look so beautiful. So that's how we made some lentil pot pies. Um, thanks so much for watching. Please make sure you like and subscribe below. Follow my blog if you like, doitwithdaisy.com. And we'll see you next time. Still is way too thick. We're running out of power on our surface area. There we go.